It finally arrived. Tehran's winter snow started to fall on the capital, but much sooner than expected. After days of continuous raining, Tehran was suddenly clad in white. With temperatures falling to nearly zero degrees Celsius, life in Iran's most populous city suddenly changed. The weather took many residents by surprise, as many did not expect such a wide-scale snowfall in a season when it usually only rains. This year, the real winter, which many expected in January, has knocked on Tehran's door about two months earlier. Meteorologists say they did expect the arrival of a cold weather mass, but also admit that Iran's capital has not seen such a phenomenon in a decade. While traffic jams and flooded streets make life difficult for the residents in some parts of Iran's capital, people still prefer to see rain clouds in the sky above, instead of smog. Ami Mehtikazemi, Press TV, Tehran. The U.S. government says a deadly plot has been foiled, lives have been saved, and the trail leads straight to the government of Iran. We are told the Iranian government was trying to hire a hitman to plant bombs in a Washington, D.C. restaurant, and the target was a young ambassador from Saudi Arabia. Could all of this bring the U.S. to the brink of a showdown with Iran, and how will the White House respond? First, let's begin with ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, who has all the details on this startling turn of events. Brian. Indeed, Diane. If the attacks had been carried out as the U.S. alleges Iran wanted, scores of people in Washington would have died, and it could well have led to a military confrontation with Iran. Israel has already tested a missile which is capable of reaching Iran. Now Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is trying to persuade his cabinet to launch a military strike against Iran's nuclear program. Are these signals of a new conflict in the Middle East? Al Jazeera has the story. Israel has test-fired a ballistic missile which is capable of striking Iran. The Defense Ministry says that it was testing its missile propulsion system from its Palmachim military base. Israel has equipment widely believed to be capable of carrying nuclear warheads. The test came amid speculation that the government could be preparing a military strike against Iran's nuclear facilities. Welcome back, everybody. Well, Israel has begun testing long-range ballistic missiles. It's a move that has many asking if Israel plans to launch a preemptive strike against Iran. Rena Nainan joins us from Jerusalem now with more. Israel is preparing for a possible attack on Iran. Drills like this one now happen on a regular basis. Evacuations, checking for radiation, and then defending the home front. This week, the Israeli military tested this long-range ballistic missile, the Jericho 3, a three-stage solid fuel missile with roughly a 4,000-mile range, capable of striking Iran. Sources close to senior Israeli cabinet officials tell Fox News senior ministers who opposed a strike are now for it. They believe sanctions won't be tough enough on Iran. Now, if the U.S. or Israel, if they plan to attack military strategists, some of them say it has to happen soon. Why is that? Well, primarily it's a strategic military problem of cloud cover over the nuclear sites in Iran. When the rainy and snowy season comes in Iran, as it's going to do in just a matter of a very few weeks, then it's militarily much more difficult to pull something like that off uh, against a, m a number of targets in Iran. So they're running against a, a window here, uh, running against a clock. Experts took note of the fact that the military disclosed delivery of the new bunker-busting bomb less than a week after a United Nations agency warned that Iran was secretly working to develop a nuclear weapon. Iran is known to have hidden nuclear complexes that are fortified with steel and concrete and buried under mountains. The Air Force and the Defense Threat Reduction Agency conducted tests at White Sands, and Boeing delivered the first massive ordnance penetrator this fall. The GBU-57 will be the largest non-nuclear bomb in the United States Air Force. 
یک مقام آگاه نظامی کشور اعلام کرد با کنترل مناسب فضای کشور و تسلط اطلاعاتی نیروهای مسلح واحد های جنگ الکترونیکی و پدافند هوایی موفق شدند یک فروند هواپیمای بدون سرنشین پیشرفته جاسوسی امریکایی از نوع RQ-170 را که به طور محدود به مناطق مرزی شرق کشور تجاوز کرده بود کشف و از کنترل متجاوزان خارج و آن را با اندک خسارتی سرنگون کنند و در اختیار بگیرند. Iranian commanders said Iran's naval forces have full control not only over the Strait of Hormuz but also over the Sea of Oman and for Iran closing the strategic waterway is not a question of if but when. Closing the Strait of Hormuz is as easy as drinking water for Iran's armed forces, the IRGC and the Navy. It's one of the basic capabilities of Iran's Navy. We are now operating in the Sea of Oman controlling the ships even in the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean. Controlling this strait is of least concern for us. The Iranian commander says the strategic Strait of Hormuz belongs to Iran and the rest of littoral states in the Persian Gulf. But if Iran happens to be unable to export its oil through the waterway under the Western sanctions regime, it will have no other option but to shut down the strait for other oil exporters and importers.